Wembley Stadium, 1966, England's greatest football achievement, and one that's brought up nearly every time the team play in an international match. Nearly half a century has passed since Bobby Moore lifted the FIFA World Cup trophy. So to help finally produce a sequel, the English Football Association has built, at the cost of over £100 million, St George's Park. The development at Burton-upon-Trent, in the heart of the Staffordshire countryside, will be the new National Football Centre. The 330-acre complex was formally opened in October by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. It features 12 full-size training pitches, including an exact replica of the current playing surface at Wembley, which is reserved solely for England coach Roy Hodgson's men to train on. The centre will also welcome every other England team, men and women, at all youth and senior levels. <laughs> Primarily, the centre will act as a national hub for match preparation, as well as the sharing of coaching ideas and methods. Everything possible to give future England internationals a competitive advantage. Holly Glover is the FA's commercial manager. There's a number of reasons why the facility has been built. Um, obviously, the home for all 24 England teams. We want to provide them with a home. Um, we want to provide them with the best possible conditions and training facilities to prepare them for our games, um, or whatever standard they are, and prepare our younger players and, and work maybe with the, the more senior teams to develop them. Um, we're also the home for coach education. So FA Learning, the educational arm of the FA, is now based here. Um, all level three and above courses are delivered here at St George's Park. Um, we want to develop better coaches who in turn will develop better players and inspire new people to come and play football, to get new people into football. I think everybody who comes here is totally blown away by it. Um, thinks it's an absolutely wonderful facility. Um, yes, we've had the seniors here, we've, we've had other England teams here, we're home for all 24 England teams now. Um, the seniors' reaction was fantastic. They were all totally blown away by the quality of the pitches, by the facilities that we've got here, the fact that they can stay in the hotel, they don't have to spend half an hour travelling on a coach to a training ground, um, that they can be on site and they can change their training programme because we've got everything all, one, all under one roof, which just makes it so much more easier for the team when they're preparing for a tournament. Away from the training pitches, the centre also boasts some state-of-the-art technology to further aid players' all-important preparation. These include hydrotherapy pool, an altitude chamber and an anti-gravity treadmill, as well as equipment for gait analysis, joint testing and heart and lung monitoring. George's Park will be a centre of excellence for sports, exercise medicine, rehabilitation, performance science and strength and conditioning. Steve Kemp is an elite football physiotherapist. Directly or indirectly, I think we can have a real effect. Uh, if, if all our teams are coming and we're assessing the team, so we screen every single team, we know everything about all the teams, and they start at 16 and that works through to senior, then I think it really can, can have an effect. And it will take time, it may take five years, 10 years, it may take 20, but I, I think it can only be a good thing. Quite simply, St George's Park contains everything anyone connected with the English game could want. Spain opened their similar centre, the Ciudad del Futbol, seven years before they won the 2010 FIFA World Cup. And it was a similar pattern with 1998 World Cup winners France and their base at Clairefontaine. Facilities in themselves won't make the three lions a better side, but the work the players can do here may ultimately help England one day win another FIFA World Cup.